This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulua Gola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Brace yourself for an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode. God is a king, but He's also a father. And as the church begins to express as the household of God, God assumes in greater degree the shape of a father. He is the head of his family called the church. And that has been established where we read from in 1 Peter chapter 3. So that from scriptures, we see the early apostles use certain words to define the community, the church community. Let me put it that way. One of the most commonly used verses is in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Paul was to bring an admonition for a second layer of commitment to God, which is what we call consecration. You have saved me. Now I offer myself to fully live for you. That's consecration. That's what he was doing in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. But there was a way in which he addressed the church that interests me. He said, therefore, brothers. Now, if you go to the King James, it says, I urge you, therefore, brethren. He was going to bring an admonition to give an instruction. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Somebody say brethren. brethren. You know, those are not, we don't call ourselves brother and sister again. We had a code in school. If I, my, my best friend on campus is, was Nathaniel, I don't know where he is now, but he, he still is a good man, Nathaniel, from Ogumosho, Otelabi. Now, Nathaniel, for example, I don't call him brother. Because in our hearts, if I called you brother in school, it means we're not close. So if I say brother Isaac, it was as though, I don't know, Satan, shall, I don't know what Satan built, but once we put brother, it means there are things I can't share with you. There's a part of my life that's supposed to be hidden with you. However, in the beginning, it was not so. The word brother, sister, depicts somebody that you can be vulnerable with. Many times when people send me messages from far, Sir, I'm struggling with my prayer life. Help me. My first question is, is there no brother or sister around you who has a vibrant prayer life? Why should we do this on WhatsApp if there is somebody beside you? A young man answered me and said, All of them are not spiritual. I said, the pop, you don't have lenses. You are blind. It means in your mind, you are the most spiritual in that environment. You don't need help. There is someone that God has placed around you. A brother, the Bible says, is for the day of adversity. You have not truly valued the person beside you until you are in trouble. Family standing up for each other. If she does something wrong to you and then you rebuke her openly people don't know what she did you know it's possible to rebuke somebody and people don't know what it's possible that people come to you and scream and say you are too hard you are too bad why did you speak to her like that what would you likely do you said see don't tell me that i spoke too hard this is what the person did not so that's not family if that thing that she did will bring her to grave, will, will further scandalize her, what we do is take the blows. I'm too hard. Okay, I'll be better. Kilo shegan, ema worry. They will abuse you, wicked man. He just saw a young lady and started abusing the lady. You know in your heart that if you tell them they will stone her. But to save her from stoning. 
I will not talk. Before I vocalize what you have done wrong, I have weighed the impact on the larger face. Will she survive? You know, I brought this thing into even praying for people. How many of you have seen me do deliverance prayers before? Stay with me. I want you to learn. Have you heard me say, Thou spirit from the belly of the ocean, you serpentine spirit, out! Have you seen me say that before? At worst, you just heard me say, out! Because this lady may be embodying a spirit today. God may show her to you as your wife tomorrow. Will you still marry somebody who, you know, you believe this pastor hears from God? So if he says a serpentine spirit, it means a serpentine spirit. I'm sure people don't believe that even if you have been delivered, they have been delivered. So that you know the spirit does not mean that you scream the name of the spirit. Because you must think into the future. If anybody will be a friend, even a roommate can pack out that night. There must be a way to mask. It's family. That's where God is calling us to. And then because you know I'll cover you, you shouldn't offend me three times. Because some people will say, oh, oh well, we can be anyhow. They'll keep, no, no, no. You shouldn't offend me three times. You should have my own heart in view. How would you feel if I do this? How would she feel if I do this? That's what God is calling us to. If I say that the call this evening as a family is that we pray for each other. I know you pray for each other. But the things we don't do for each other or the things we do to each other are the things that weaken our corporate prayer expressions. And it is because we have become so locked up in or locked out of the consciousness that the church is a family. What God is building in the earth as his kingdom is essentially a family it's an army but like the army of Israel that army is an army because it is a family there may be an army it's an army of diverse banners the the, the spearmen the swordsmen all of them in their beautiful colors but if you bring all of them back all of them had progenitors who were 12 sons of the same father are you with me so it's as a family are we going to have spiritual um what do they call those things tribes yes but you see the tribes are not cults the tribes only ensure that the genre of function of that particular tribe is sustained they are not grounds for coming into groups and saying we are not relating with those people because Israel will not be Israel the church will not be church if it's a if it's just a, a court clan thing there are things that family has that we will not have and that we cannot pray to have are you with me I've shared with you an experience I had when I went to bios I was caught normally I don't one of the reasons why we just have one, two, three, okay, maybe four short steps here, and you know, the steps are not even full steps, is because I don't like normally preaching, ministering that high. Once I enter high, I'm more of a give your life to Christ person, prayer person, an evangelist of some sort. But I know that God has gifted me a robust teaching ministry, so I like to be close to the people. If I had my way, this front rug is too too far away from you i wanted to bring you close so that if you want to sleep now 
If you want to sleep now, I'm pointing to one, the only person I'm pointing to, if you want to sleep now, I can twist your hair and say, wake up, wake up. So I was gifted a high stage. And I ministered. People were blessed. A lot of things were said about the meeting, how God impacted them. But in myself, I could not feel the meeting. And I know that one of the things God has given me about how I do ministry is that it can be felt. And that's how he sent me. When a woman touched Jesus, Jesus felt virtue leave him. So some of us have as our, we call them um, spiritual notifications. You heard me say sometimes when I talk a, a few times, oh, I feel an anointing on my head. Yes, it's a notification to say that this thing I'm saying is just by stretch inspiration, but God has borne witness. As you walk with him, you will know your own. It's person specific. So I got back that night and I said, Lord, I don't like this. I, I didn't come to play here by Elsa. You need to help me. And he was encouraging me. I said, you need to help me. I had only two days. The next day was supposed to be deliverance, all of this, all of these things. And I need to teach my way into those dimensions. So I, I now went on YouTube. Look for fathers who had mastered high ground teaching and entrance into the miraculous prayers. And I began to listen to them and pray and pray and pray. God now said to me, some of these things you are asking for are no longer with the fathers. Just as some of the things that I currently possess, if you go towards some of the fathers, you won't find it there again. Because God has deposited them for a generation in somebody who is at proxim with that generation. I know it's in your heart to meet Daddy Kumuyi and collect some things from him. God will not answer that prayer. He will likely put it in someone who is close to you. So you must be able to discern the kumui in your brother. This is how church works. If we understand these things, you will value your brother more. It's because you think you don't need them that when there is a problem, you break off from them. The Lord now named two of my brothers. The first name he named was Apostle Mike Rock. He said, look at Mike. The second one was Pastor Isaac Wede. He said, look at them. High ground, teaching, prayers, miraculous. So I sat with two of them. And I prayed. God, you have been faithful to my brothers. Such as they have, I also received. When I mounted the stage that night, I was like a god. I will stand and say, ah, there are three ladies that have pains in the stomach here. Because we didn't lay hands on you if we didn't know what was wrong with you. Say this one is just regular stomach ache. This one, you've had three surgeries, fibroids, and there's a fourth one growing now. Yes or no? Was diagnosed two days ago. Yes. Uh, but I don't know if I should do the surgery. No, the fibroid will go this night. Uh, you, you had an accident on a bike six months ago, right? Yes, sir. So, but the pain keeps coming back. It was exact. Even me, I was surprised. But I knew the secret. It was not me. I had fallen into the body. And the life in the body was ministry, not a man. That's what a family is. That's what a family is. That's why we fight to stay together. Because there are things that God will never give to you in prayer. He will give to your brother. And until you see your brother as a custodian of an aspect of the family life. He will not love them. He will not embrace them. You will live with them with a fracture. This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulu Agola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Raise yourself an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode.